you just want to introduce yourself in the middle of the pack with us, or do you want a, a, a special guest sign in, please? Uh, I can introduce myself. My name is Christian nice. Benedict. I blog under the name of Volnavia Morbius at crowlabs.blogspot.com. And I also started a, a, a podcast under the same name. So that that's who I am. Awesome. Kevin, it's your turn. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, I'm Kevin Matthews, Scottish film fan living in England. And um, I, all I've got on my mind at the moment is jorts because we've been commenting on uh, Tyler's replies and saying he's the jort king. So I may discuss the movies this evening, even though one of them's a Hammer film, and uh, subconsciously put everyone in jorts, which I don't think ever appeared in Hammer horror movies. That but... would improve some of them, though. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know. Did 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 Hillary Swank ever, like, Show up in jorts in that hammer, that latter day hammer film. Oh, season. oh yeah, it was, yeah. It was the reaping a hammer one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah or not was. the reaping. No, it was. Um, it had Christopher Lee in it too, and I can't remember. I can't remember the name of it. The Residence. Oh, oh the yeah, Residence. yeah. Yes, I I forgot that that yeah. one existed. <laughs> As well, you should have. <laughs> I'm Dave Gray, and this week I learned it, it doesn't matter uh, how often you ask. Uh, Megalopolis's social media people if uh, Coppola harassed more the two young victims of Victor Salva or the women on the Megalopolis set they won't block you which to their credit you know yay I, I get to ask that every day I won't get an answer but I get to ask and I'm Tyler Hosley and it's the beginning of October so you know what that means pumpkin spice still tastes like shit and this is Raiders the Podcast yeah. Hey, I thought you were going to say you had your uh, your spooky jorts on. I thought that's where that was going, Tyler. I mean, I can iron on a pumpkin on my jorts, all twenty <laughs> pairs of them. But you know, <laughs> I try. Yeah, I've got, um, I've got, I've got y'all beat. I'm wearing a Sarah Connor wife beater. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, I watched. Kiss of the Vampire from 2009 because I thought it might be a remake of the one we watched. It's not. <laughs> it's a piece of shit. Oh, you poor bastard. It, yeah, it is not a remake. It's just a piece of shit. Don't watch that for the love of God. Just pretend it don't exist. Just skip that. Um, I watched Apartment 7A, which I actually really liked a lot. I seem to be the only one that does. Uh, I loved Julie Garner and Diane Weist in, that, in the show, in this movie. I mean, they are so good in it. Um, I thought they did a good job with the 60s period piece setting. It looks good visually. It's got some good costumes, good soundtrack. I like the ending. I was a fan of that one. And uh, besides that, I've been watching a lot of exploitation because that is my theme of October this month. So I just started that with I watched Hidden in the Woods, the um, the original, not the American remake with uh, Michael Biehn. Um, I really like the original. It's really good. Um, really good Italian movie. Uh, Italian exploitation movie. Uh, the remake is okay. I haven't seen it since it came out, but I really like the original a lot. And um, besides that, just a bunch of TV. And uh, that's pretty much it for me. Um, I didn't. I didn't get much. I did watch uh, Juan the Grudge, the original, which I am a big fan of. I just have a soft spot for that whole series. And uh, I showed Killa One Cut of the Dead, which she really got into which is always gratifying because yeah i i never i never know i never know how she's gonna take anything so the documentary my name is Polly. um dave i know two polys it's Polly shore or Polly walnuts no it's not that is, that is the limit <laughs> Polly murray Polly god Mullins. damn it it's excellent it's on prime people should go see it they should be better remembered than they are what was the name? Sorry, my my name is Polly Murray. Uh, Polly Murray was uh, that was good. Oh, I, I started Apartment Seven A, but I, I fell asleep, so I don't feel like I can count it. I mean, that's that's pretty much the majority response. <laughs> yeah, I right out. So, yay! Was that you? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that. Oh, oh, did I watch yeah. it? Did, did I watch something else? It's the 
No, that's it. Yeah, that's that's it. I watched the Department of Seven Days as well. Everyone was talking about it, and I'm such a sheep. So I quite liked Julia Garner in that, and I'm happy to see Dan Weist in anything, really. So, uh, and they were both good. Um, so that's that's a plus. But it's like it's just not a good film. Even if you didn't know like where it was supposed to be linking up to, it's predictable and and pretty dull. There's one good uh, dreamy dance sequence that I like. It was very uh, strange in an impressive way, but the rest I just didn't like. And because you do know where it's going, really, like most horror fans will, or if you've seen the poster or whatever, then you're just waiting for, for things to connect at the end because it's like the you know the first omen that i didn't really enjoy by the end you're just like right well they've got to get to this point so when are they doing that that right that's it tying up the pieces i i uh, fell asleep during first omen also oh so, there you go you're you're nothing if not consistent so for, for period <laughs> evil baby movies i've watched this year i am i am one for three making it through awake <laughs> I uh, I rewatched The Hitcher. I got that nice second sight Blu-ray uh, set, and it was um, it was beautiful. Really, really good stuff. Uh, holds up really well. I was upsetting my partner by saying, "I reckon back then Rutger Hauer could have played a good Hannibal Lecter." She was like, "Hell no!" I was like, "Hell yes!" We argued. I didn't win the argument, so I just. <laughs> I just kept quiet after that. But like the, the hitch is great, and I've probably watched that more than any other Rutger Hauer movie. It's weird to see um, like such a young and baby-faced Jennifer Jason Leigh in it. That's odd, but she's, uh, she's great in it in a, a role that could have been like a lot less. Um, it's... <laughs> see, Thomas Hill is good, and he gets the the harder stuff like he has to he has to do the the face gardening of pain and trauma and that isn't always flattering for him but he's he's good enough at that it's it's a very weird movie there's all the the background stuff that's very strange about um it was eric red who, who wrote that and Conan and tate and, and one or two other things uh like it's it's bizarre when i forget what happened to him and then read up on it but it's a gorgeous set it looks fantastic in this restoration just beautiful vivid colors and uh yeah i'm really happy i made time for that again i watched loads of our bits and bobs but i'm getting myself confused already i've got to stay focused on the films that we're covering this week oh well, in addition to the films that we talk we're talking about today i've um well, I've been diving into horror movies, of course, because it's October. Um, and the, uh, I, I took the opportunity to revisit the Texas Chainsaw Massacre when it was showing at one of the local theaters. It was one of the 50th anniversary showings or something like that, for whatever reason they had it. And it still works. Um, watched uh, Lord of Misrule from last year, which on social media I describe as what you get if you order the wicker man off of Timu <laughs> and uh, what the hell else I mean um, I quite enjoyed that but you're not wrong with something like that <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, watched uh, The Dark Half which is George Romero doing Stephen King's worst book um, and uh and speaking of Stephen King, I watched the new remake of Salem's Lot yesterday. Uh, and it's not bad, but it's not better than not bad, which is disappointing. <sighs> I mean, so it, I mean, just in line with the other two. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, it does keep that that scene that that haunts the the memory of, of kids who saw Salem's Lot when it, the, you know, the Toby Hooper version uh, when they were way too young to watch it. You know, just floating out there outside the window. Because um, you can't really make Salem's Lot without that scene. And uh, I've, I've mostly been watching, like, Eastern European horror movies. I watched, well, 
um, the mysterious uh, the mysterious castle of the Carpathians, which is sort of what I ha- what what it, it's sort of what a Hammer film might have looked like if it had been made by the Monty Python people. I mean, I mean, I watched it because all of the props and some of the special effects were done by Jan Svankmajer, who you know, the great stop motion animator. But um, it's nuts. And um, uh, Beauty and the Beast from 1978, the one directed by the guy who made The Cremator, which is as gloomy a film that, as I think I've ever seen. I don't think th- I, I think that Eastern European people really um, are in touch with bleakness. Yeah, well, I mean, it's Eastern Europe. Yeah, I mean, you know, Czechoslovakia in 1978 wasn't exactly a hopping place, I guess. Well, depends <laughs> on what you were doing and who you were running from. That's fair. This week, we watched the 1963 Hammer Vampire film, Kiss of... <clears throat> ah, crap. Kiss of the Vampire. And the 2024 Irish horror film, Oddity. Hey, Kevin? Yes. Would you like to pick a movie and tell us about it? Yes, I would. I am starting with Oddity. Uh, your pick, Dave. And a film that I'd last watched a, about a month ago or a few weeks ago, so it was still fresh in my memory. I was tempted to just refer to my notes and my review, and I was like, no, I'll just sit down and rewatch it. And I'm glad I did because... Like, it's just a delight. Anyway, the the plot is basically a young woman who is home alone at night is killed. Uh, she is the wife of a psychiatrist, Head, and uh, it seems that one of the patients in Ted's care got away and killed his wife. Sometime later, Ted has a new partner. They're in the same home where his ex-wife was killed, and they are visited by his uh, deceased wife's twin sister, who claims to have uh, clairvoyance and also runs a shop full of kind of supernaturally charged oddities, I would say. And uh, she also has a large wooden mannequin with her, where she gets that delivered first and opens it up, and hijinks ensue. Uh, That covers that. I I really like oddity. I I enjoyed Caveat, which was this director's uh, first feature and, uh, and the one before this. And I think it's strange, like, I, I rate them both equally in terms of what is what is achieved compared to what he was going for as Damien McCarthy, who's the writer-director. But Oddity feels like I mean it's the more the more polished and enjoyable complete piece it is odd um, it has it, it, it works um, despite the, the fact that it has this vein of dark humour that shouldn't necessarily work especially the way some of it is delivered like the the guy chatting to the the patient who has a a false eye, asking about spelling his name, is really twisted and also really funny, and it it shouldn't work. It is almost a little dark comedy sketch in the midst of this, uh, but just somehow it all comes together. I think visually it it looks uh, nice enough throughout, although it is it is quite a, a dark and dingy movie, but it's. It's all lit well enough. You can see everything going on. It's um, it's fine. It kind of stays oppressive rather than being like annoyingly murky. Uh, the performances are good, although the standout is uh, Carolyn Bracken, who plays the um, the the sister of the deceased wife. Oh, I should I can't recall if I mentioned she's blind as well, um, because that does you know factor into the the plotting but um i could see people watching this and either wanting more or uh viewing it as a 
a few sequences spliced together that have punchlines. But, as I said, for me, it just all intertwines together real well. And the final, final punchline is... It's it's maybe one of my favourite horror movie endings of the of the last few years. It it made me smile and like shows a scene that has a certain atmosphere of dread in it. It's just like an expert blend from start to finish with this one. So I really like it. I'm glad you picked it, Dave, and I'm glad I didn't take the lazy option to refer to my review because it is one uh, that you can enjoy on rewatch uh, for the for the little details, for the building of suspense and the set pieces and, and just like the whole atmosphere throughout. Nice one, Dave. Um... I liked it. I think I liked it a little bit less than Kevin did. Um, I thought it was a little bit slow um, to get going. Uh, I do like how it edits the prologue so that you don't really know what actually happened after the man with the glass eye shows up at the house um, uh, because it, it, it obscures the whether or not there was another presence in the house. Was he telling the truth? Was he crazy? He was obviously in an insane asylum. He could have been crazy. Um, and, and it does a nice job of cutting that scene like right where it needs to in order to propel the rest of the plot uh, and the mystery at the center of it. Um, I thought it turned, I thought it mix and matches certain like subgenres of horror because you it reminded me a little bit of the old um friday the 13th tv series if if any of you remember that yes uh, with with, robbie. with robbie. yeah with robbie yeah. yeah exactly um where you have these these cursed objects that go out into the world um and i mean this turns that trope a little bit on its head because <laughs> Um, the proprietor of the, of the, the cursed object shop in this film actually uses them, uh, as weapons to defend herself. Um, it, it, I like the, the, the element of, of paranormal, uh, investigation that's in this film. If they had wanted to, if they hadn't taken a certain turn of plot, they could have continued with that. Um, if they wanted to make another film, I like the fact that the bunny from caveat is in this film, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I noticed. And, um, I did, I was a little bit disappointed that it turned into an EC comics plot at the end, but as an EC comics plot, it does actually twist the knife in just the right way at the, at the very end in the last shot. And I, and I appreciated that. I thought that, um, Carolyn Bracken was very good, uh, playing the sisters who, I mean, it, I'm not going to say it's on the level of say Jeremy Irons and dead ringers, but they were, they were obviously distinctly different people. So, you know, good on her for giving a really good performance. Yeah, I'm going to be totally honest here. I thought this was very, very just okay-ish. Uh, I, I didn't really dislike anything about it, but I also didn't really love anything about it either. It's going to be one of those movies that I watch again next October thinking that I haven't seen it, but I actually have, and I just forgot it existed. Um, it's very mediocre. I, I appreciate that they didn't go super, super heavy on the jump scares. They were present, yes, but not nearly as bad as I thought they would be. But at the same time, it still kind of felt like it came from the school of James Wan just a little bit. Um, I do appreciate a good slow burn. We covered a great one tonight with Kiss of the Vampire. We'll more to that in a little bit. Um, this buildup just kind of bored the hell out of me. I, I just didn't find any of it very engaging story-wise. Um, I didn't have any issues with the cast. I thought they were all fine. Actually, I really like Carolyn Brack in here. She's really good. Uh, visually it looks fine the final 30 minutes does pick up quite a bit but it just it just wasn't enough to personally save it for me it's just another 
very middle of the road supernatural horror movie. Everything just felt very stagey, kind of uneven tonally. There's there's nothing bad here, nothing outright bad at all. It's just I just wasn't feeling it as a whole. But it's not the worst thing ever. It's just kind of just okay for me. So what I, you're saying to you is it, it was no fear dot com. No. Well, nothing well, is fear dot com. I mean, yeah, let's let's be real here, man. Uh, so, you know, this actually ties into one of McCarthy's short films. Also, uh, Olin Bull is the subject of, I think it's maybe 10 years old now, uh, maybe 2012, uh, how Olin lost his eye. Played by a different actor, though, which, you know. I also liked it. Um, I mostly agree. I I have some issues with it. I have a few more issues than uh, you guys do. First off, the, the cast is really good. Bracken is excellent. I really like pretty much the whole first hour. I think it's pretty solid. Uh, both sequences that take place a year earlier uh, during the, the murder are, I think they're all pretty well done. Even if you know what the beats are going to be, because, you know... You watch enough horror movies, you go, okay, now it's time for the jump scare. And there it is. So, you know, while it stand, falls into the standard beats, I think they did them well enough. And again, Bracken really sells it as both sisters. Um, I think my problem is when it goes more into the second half, where it kind of... I've known a lot of blind people in my life and uh, spoiler, just jump ahead. This is a small one, 10 seconds. None of them would run full tilt down an open hallway. They've never been in before. Just, I'm just putting that out there. So, you know, as, as um, that something that she, I, I thought she, did that deliberately though because Maybe. Of the, I mean yeah um, she, she might have because of her saying she was going to pay for something <laughs> yeah. at some point yeah and I, I, I get that I, I think she did I think she's supposed to I mean I do I'm agree just saying with it, you. it, it I, never I would have happened they would have groped forward and then done it yeah. you know that's all I'm saying it's it just for me for my pedantic self no that's not the right word whatever for for my jackass self it was just something that made me go huh that's not how that would have happened. But that's, again, just me. I just think when it goes full tilt into the horror stuff, it just doesn't land as well. Uh, the whole reveal, it's just, I don't know. It's just a little too obvious. Because, it, it, uh, yeah, uh, it, it is an EC comic. And it's fine as an EC comic. I just, I just feel the parts were better than the whole. Like, they could have made something really engaging with this setup and with this cast. And instead, it's fine. I mean, it's not bad. I enjoyed it. It's just, I, I don't know. It was just, it felt disappointing, ultimately. You know, it it's fine. I'll watch it again. I'll do the exact same thing T does. I will totally forget I saw it. And I will watch it next October. I'll count it as a new uh, view for the horror challenge. And somebody will go... Dude, you s talked about that on the podcast last year, and I'll be like, oh, shit, that's true. It's not bad, though. I mean, it's it's enjoyable. I just, I don't know. I, I think the opening scene is so good, it just set my expectations higher than they should have been. I did love that house, though. What I uh, meant to say as well, I, I did like it. Um, it's just a little thing, but... Um... You know, his his new partner, obviously there's the, the tension that's there when the sister visits. But I kind of liked in the third act that that didn't play out the way I thought it would. Like, she doesn't necessarily stay that way. And she isn't, you know, she, she isn't an idiot who in horror movies would be like, well, I'm just going to stay in this dark room and wait it out until things are sorted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd, it's a small thing, but I quite liked how that panned out compared to how I thought it was going to go from the start. Yeah. 
I mean, well, once they once they introduce Ivan, it's kind of you know, it's like, oh, that's what happened, right? Anyway, it, it's it's enjoyable. I can. Uh, Kiss of the Vampires from 1963. It's about uh, car trouble strands, a honeymooning couple in a small uh, southern European village. Uh, aristocratic family in the area reaches out to help them. Sinister consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoyed this one a lot, actually. Uh, right from that opening coffin scene, I was totally hooked with that red paint blood just oozing from the coffin, uh, then going straight to the opening credits. That was such a great opening scene. I was just I was hooked instantly. Uh, the costumes are amazing. Love the costumes here. The sets are great. Super gothic. Castles and fog. Just Hammer always delivers that wonderful gothic imagery. Visually, it just all looks so good and has such a strong use of color, too. Um, I loved the masked ballroom dancing. Uh, that gave me some like eyes wide shut vibes with those masks, uh, the cults, the rituals, the secret societies. I just I love shit like that. And it's really good here. Uh, the cast is great i thought jennifer daniel was excellent Uh, i really liked her in this um it the movie obviously doesn't have like you know the star power of christopher lee and peter cushing the hammer stuff the that hammer stuff but uh, i don't really think it needed it here i really like the cast here it's paced well it's slow but totally different from oddity this was engaging for me always um it's good stuff i uh, i really really enjoyed this one quite a bit Uh, yeah, I also really liked Kiss of the Vampire. Um, I actually, I ended up watching this twice this week and the second time, uh, without, cause I, I, I had internet issues and it kind of went funky. I clicked on a different version and it was, uh, the TV version, which is weird. <laughs> it, the, like there's a whole new subplot. And yeah. they took out all the blood. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, like my thoughts on it are not as, as concrete as, as everyone else's are going to be. Cause, uh, my notes, I, I sorted them, but I'm not sure if I reference something that's the TV version, just, you know, be like, no wrong one. And I'll apologize. Um, I liked, I liked how it looked. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's sixties hammer, so it can look uh, a few different ways, but it generally looked really good. Colors really nice. Um, I love that old car. Like we don't see old 1910 cars enough in anything. Uh, that's just me. I'd like to see a movie about racing them uh, death race style at four miles an hour. Um, I really like Jennifer Daniel in it. Uh, Clifford Evans is professor Zimmer and he's a, he's a presence that is just, I'm not sure how to describe how professor Zimmer, like he's, He's the drunk version of Van Helsing. Yes, it, but like if Hel- Van Helsing just didn't do anything. Yeah, I, I don't think I quite understood the ending, though. Personally speaking, like, did I miss something? Why is it? Why is it bats? Why not? Okay, that's all. I was just wondering if like I miss like if it went when it went funky. If there I, was like bats I, or the natural end, I was like, okay. I think the I think the idea is that you you that uh, Professor Zimmer is combating black magic with black magic and right. it equates the bats with the vampires. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, that makes sense. Because I got I got that I was like, okay, so he's using the magic and that's cool. But then it's like, why why are vampire okay? Because usually they're one and the same. Yeah, the real question the real question you should be asking is where the hell did the vampire bats come from? Since they're native to South America and this is in <laughs> Southern Austria. Well, it's. <laughs> Southern I assume they keep stocks it's, of them in Romania for just in case. Sure, sure. And they got I, mean, this is, I mean, this film takes place in horror movie land. I mean, you're not going to get <laughs> concrete geography out of this. I mean, th- this this movie does involve people who ended up somehow eight, 18 miles off course on what should have been a one road through the country in in a car. In 1910. I mean, like, we're already... Logic does not enter in. But it's, it's good. I, I like the cast. 
I I absolutely uh love the the brother and sister vampires. They play it so well. So when the reveal happens, it is a little bit more impactful than in a lot of others. I mean, like I know they're bad. You know, you know they're bad, but you still let your guard down a little because of the pacing of the film. I I think it's a lot really good. It is an enjoyable one. And I hadn't seen this one before. So, you know, thank you for that. I had seen this one before and I didn't really enjoy it. So I revisited it with uh, fresh eyes and a fresh mind and I didn't really enjoy it. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was like, no, you got it. The, the, the one I didn't like as much this week was Christian's because it's okay for us to bicker amongst ourselves and we can pick each other over. Well, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Year, but, yeah, but I wanted, to, I wanted to have a clean sweep of like goodness and positivity. You I, I don't, bastard. <laughs> I don't hate this. It's <laughs> with with the many and varied selections from Hammer Studios, there are many worse films in this. But um, I, I don't know. It was just like, could we have got anyone else? You know, Don Sharp directed this, Christian, and you could have brought a psychomania. We could have all been watching <laughs> Resurrected Bikers at this point. But this, well, I'm, I'm this... waiting on I'm waiting on the next Severin box set for that film. Oh, Psychomania and that? I believe so, yeah. Nice. I picked up so, the BFI Blu-ray at this end uh, some time ago. I always have a soft spot for that. They're, they're like, the, the, the bikers in that are the, the equivalent. Yeah, of they're the worst monsters ever. From Monty Python. Yeah. Uh, I, as I say, I don't, like, I don't hate this. Part, part of it is just my bias. I always prefer a Hammer movie if it's got Cushing or Lee in it. That's a point there. Well, but that's, um, just being a reasonable human being. Yeah, I, I know. But then, and also the, the classic stable of, like, ha- hammer, glamour women. And I, I didn't get my Barbara Shelley. I didn't get any of the others that I recognize. I just had someone Do, who was doing a really good job in the lead role. Oh, great. And Jennifer Daniels That's, is gorgeous. What the fuck are you talking about? She's lovely, but I don't have any, like... Uh, any so you didn't jerk off to her when you were 16 and you're going to hold that against her now? Yes, that's, weird, that's a dude. lifetime bond, Dave. A lifetime bond. <laughs> Sometimes literally if you overdo it. So <laughs> it, oh, it was, um, it's, it's good, um, you know, and for people, it, it is good that you've got some different elements in here compared to the, the many other vampire movies that Hammer did. And those elements are interesting and they are, they are trying to like give you the old and familiar with things that are slightly new. As Tyler said, there was a bit of a sort of eyes wide shut uh, vibe to the, the big ball. It certainly feels more like that rather than the um, fearless vampire killer style. Isn't, isn't Isabel black in um, twins of evil? I mean that one, you, why didn't I, that bring over the warm fuzzies? I can't. I can't remember. Um, at all. I've just looked up. She was born in Edinburgh, and her date of birth was like one day before mine. Well, and obviously thirty odd years. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't know that, Dave. But the end of this is clearly you are trying to come up with explanations about geography and uh, real <laughs> proper reasons for the bats. I know somewhere in this production, there was one production designer who was just dead keen and was like, I've got all those bats done. And they're like, no, no, we've got a, we've got a finale planned, we're fine. And he just kept coming in every day. I've got all those bats, though. Can we use all those bats? And eventually he just went, right, fine, we'll use all the bats. And that was one happy production designer that had that. One little bat maker. Yeah, especially uh, since the sets are reused from from Brides of Dracula. So, oh, are they? I didn't. Uh, I didn't well, yeah, they're the, very the familiar. I mean, they use that they use that set a lot in their vampire films. Yep, it's in Brides of Fu Manchu, also. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've still which which I believe was also sort. Of, I, I believe that that was also 
directed by Don Sharp as well. I know he did one. Yeah. I know he did at least one of the Fu Manchus, maybe more, because I know I know that he worked with Harry Allen Ta- Harry Allen Towers. Yeah, so, I, I think that is the one he did because that was uh, two years after this. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I've not yet broken into my Fu Manchu box set to oh, see. Oh, lucky you. You are in your what, what treats are in treats. there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, as I say, it's not like it's far from the, the worst of Hammer. But I think for the vampire movies, I just tend to prefer the ones that have, you know, people that have already had cinematic attachments to it or, or just. I don't know, stuff stuff that's a bit more fun for me personally. And this didn't come together uh, as I told Evans is fun as Professor Zimmer. And I'll say again that Jennifer Daniel is really good as uh, Marianne. But the rest, like, they didn't really work for me. Especially, I wasn't a fan of Wilman, as it, you know, Ravna, the, the head guy. He had no. He, he is kind he, of a bargain no real, basement cushing. Yeah, but he, not not even that. He had no real sort of presence or uh, like. Well, it seems to me in this film. Them. Yeah, it seems to me in this film that that the vampires are actually kind of straw men. I mean, they they go down like punks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'd I'd still rather have somebody as a a decent figurehead for them, and Roman didn't. Like, didn't feel that. And that's, you know, it's almost like, uh, uh, what is it they say with your, I guess, is with your action heroes or your bonds and stuff, and it, it really depends on them having a good villain or enemy. And, and that uh, is kind of a, a vital component here as well for me. And that, that didn't work. But there's, there's some nice stuff here, uh, some some nice visuals. And, yeah, it, it wasn't an unpleasant time. I mean... It's it's all uphill after we've already watched What's Up Rockers this year, Tyler. Hey, anytime. <laughs> That's me. Well, I mean, this was my selection. Um, it was on my it was on my mind because I had recently watched The Fearless Vampire Killers, um, which this film reminds me of greatly. I kind of think that Doctor Ravna is like the idiot third cousin for Count Crowlock in that film. Um, and it's got that dance scene that is not nearly as inventive as the one in the Polanski film, but I knew that if I selected the the Polanski film, I would have to explain to, you know, why I would be selecting a Polanski film when Polanski is, you know, a piece of shit human being, a la Francis Ford Coppola and Victor Salva. Um... <laughs> Um, no, I like this film a lot, but uh, I like the I tend to like the the Hammer vampire films that aren't Dracula films. Um, this was originally planned to be a direct sequel to Brides of Dracula, and Christopher Lee was supposed to return as as Doctor Ravna, um, who would have been Dracula at that point. And I'm I'm sure that the film probably would have been better for that, but it didn't happen. Uh, the whole production sort of fell apart, and this is what resulted uh, when they decided to go ahead with the script that they had. Um, I, I I tend to use this film as an example of what I call horror movie land, which I, I, I discussed on another podcast a couple of days ago, which is to say um, it doesn't exist someplace real. It, it exists someplace where the rules of the horror movie sort of apply, and that's how you get vampire bats in in eastern europe um it's also how you get sort of like a non uh, a non-specific time period where you have the lord of the manor and then you have the 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 frightened towns people and then you have a car you know they drive him in a car what i mean when i mean this is i i guess this takes place in 1910 but it could take place any other time except for the opening scene with the automobile. Um, I really like Clifford Evans. He's my uh, second favorite uh, vampire slayer in, in um, the hammer stable after Andrew Keir in uh, uh, Dracula Prince of Darkness. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love 
love, love, love Peter Cushing, but I kind of prefer Peter Cushing as a rad bastard as Frankenstein. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, um, I wasn't sure there, but you, you pulled it back at the end, Christian. Wasn't <laughs> <it>? <laughs> Um, and, and not only that, I mean, I hadn't seen the film in a while, and I, so I, I wanted to revisit it because I mean, I've had this film for decades at this point, so um, oh, I wanted to see if it was something that I might be interested in upgrading, and, and I, I don't think that I do. Um, I don't really feel the need to see the the TV recut of it. I, w- I will say that does some interesting things. <laughs> they they actually talk about the cult, and you get like more of an idea about what's going on in the town. It's totally unnecessary, but it is interesting filler. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it, it also has like the the unfortunate tendency of the ten, of of the Hammer uh, vampire films to equate um, sexuality and uh, epicureanism uh, with being, you know demonic and and satanic and and all of the horrible things that people hurl at at people who are not you know upright upstanding church of england christians church of england all of the pedophilia none of the guilt <laughs> but all all of the you know colonialism though so. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, <laughs> why why leave those two things behind? Well, that's fair. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is a favorite, but I'm not going to defend it. It's 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 clearly inferior to some of their better productions. Um, this is a little bit far down my list of their favorite uh, vampire movies after uh, um, Twins of Evil and um, The Vampire Lovers. But not because I'm I'm jerking it to Ingrid Pitt. Oh, That's just oh. a bonus. <laughs> That's just a bonus. Yeah. yeah. See, we have we have completely different viewing habits. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly. I mean, that, that, that car I am obsessed now. That's a 1903 D. Dion Boten Type Q. That's the sexiest thing in the movie. To be fair, <laughs> it really is. I mean, that thing up on those wheels, man. Oh, I'm going to have dreams about that tonight. So so we've, we've moved on to like a David Cronenberg movie. <laughs> we have. We've learned things. Things have been learned. We've all... Special time for all. I don't know. I just feel bad I didn't have more to say about Oddity. So this is going to be like the shortest episode we've had in a while. Oh, sorry. I mean, we can talk. I mean, I hey. can talk more about... It's not on you. That's on me, man. Like oddity, it's it's fine. But it's time don't to. You guys no- don't you guys normally do like three movies? I was actually no. surprised that it was only two. No, we do two. We do two. Uh, except at the end of the month, uh, not this month. This month it'll be the third week. We'll we'll do three or four. Uh, oh well, Christian's right though. In October, oh, we yeah. normally we each pick a yeah. movie. But then but. Uh, Craig said, "I'm getting married, so can we please only do two? a week and i went okay so i scheduled things so i'd have you know i could do the two movies and then do other things and then craig went i won't be there at all through october <laughs> so ain't that just the thing it's like you know you went out of the way to get pineapple on the pizza for one guy <laughs> and he winds up eating your pizza yeah it, it, this is you know this is just craig's mo it, we we're still very fond of him, and we can't wait for him to return, jackass, but it's that time, and it's time to pick one. Uh, I don't know, honestly. For me, I think Kiss of the Vampire edges it. I think it's a tie. I think they're both about equal quality. Uh, I would give it to Kiss of the Vampire. I wasn't a huge, huge fan of Oddity, if I'm being honest. Uh, I would give it to Oddity, but as a bonus on this shorter episode, I will uh, say that I was not a huge, huge fan of VHS Beyond that I forgot to mention in uh, what we watched this week's section. Oh, I forgot that was a thing. Yeah. 
I'm not yeah, gonna I, watch that. I'm not actually book. allowed to have opinions on the VHS movies because I know people involved with making them. Uh, <laughs> oh, so, okay. so it's best that I don't comment on any of them. Right, that's yeah, it. It's probably hard that I just forgot about it until now. Then, yay! Uh next week. Anna is joining us, and it's been a while since uh, they've been with us. It's been a long time since Christiane's been here, too. Thank you for making that never happen again, Kevin, you fucker. Um, <laughs> was, it, was, it, was it because of Guyana Cult of the Damned? <laughs> I, I don't know. It just happened. Uh, I lose track. Until, like I always mean to ask people to guess more often than I do, but then I forget, and then, like, months have gone by and i feel bad and i keep forgetting so we'll, we'll... and all the people we know are really busy <laughs> in october as well yeah and christian you're um are you, are you sort of daily or every few days with the the blogging again at the moment well, when i can actually will myself to do it i'm i'm gonna try to do it maybe every two days Ooh, yeah i've, see, I've seen one or two from you already well yeah I've, yeah well one of them was a podcast that i recorded before october yeah. So. But, uh, um, but yeah, one so far this month. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't keep up with. The, see, I can't, I tried to blog, and do you know how long my longest blog went? Three weeks before I got, I just forgot, and I stopped. I have been doing this for seventeen years, I think. Yeah. See, I, I'm impressed, and I applaud that. I just. The only reason this goes out every week is because if it doesn't, Tyler cries. <laughs> <laughs> and then his dad calls me. He goes, why the fuck is my son crying again? And I cannot explain that to this man more than like once every <laughs> three years. So. Uh, Anna is I'm totally. OK. Anna is having us watch The Amazing Mr. X, a.k.a. The Spiritualist from 1948. Ooh. Uh, they're picking against Tyler, which Tyler has promised us is the most Tyler pick to ever be Tylered. So, yay. That's a pretty nasty one. Um, as I said earlier, uh, my theme of this month is exploitation films. So we're watching an exploitation film from Chile, uh, Trauma, from 2017. I mean, you say that like it's not your main theme every month. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the most part, it is. <laughs> I've seen so much torture and abuse. And... <sighs> yeah, we, we we might have been safer years ago, Dave, sheltering with the Church of England. This is just <laughs> this is just pain oh. from time. <laughs> well, at least the at least the COE never had an Inquisition. <laughs> Probably not for the lack of trying. <laughs> well, all, all of their inquisitors were freelancers like Matthew Hopkins. We're on Instagram, Raiders underscore of underscore the underscore podcast. We're on Facebook where I sometimes remember to post up on Wednesdays, sometimes Thursday, sometimes Friday, sometimes Saturday if I forget totally. We have a YouTube channel where you can like, subscribe, and comment on Kevin's awesome videos weekly. He has yet to make a video of his masturbation habits yet, unfortunately. Uh, well, you can I always... feel that's probably this week now. So, it is. Yay. That's why I brought it up. That's why I brought it up. And you can always email us at Raiders of the Podcast at gmail.com. As always, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks so much for uh, coming back, Christiane. Next time, it shouldn't be so long, but again, I'll forget and then feel bad and guilt myself out of inviting you for a while well this is an unusual month for me because normally this is the heart of film festival screening for me but th i'm not doing that this year so i got time yay yay thank you for joining us always lifting us beyond the gutter level we're at. are you kidding me we talked about <laughs> we actually yeah we went deeper to this level. week than normal so and you, really you know, like... there there's a documentary about uh, the actor Helmut Berger that I think Tyler really needs to see. I'll talk to you guys next week. All see right. See Thank yeah. you for having me. She thinks that the werewolf has the fuzziest face. She's going to have a party in the mummy's tomb. And she's in love with the... <laughs>
creature from the black lagoon. 